If you rip into Dead by Daylight's audio files, then you come across these unused sounds in the killer sound effects folder. These are unlike any other killer sounds in the game. They're almost sci-fi-esque in nature. You might be interested to know that there are two killers in Dead by Daylight that go totally unused, the Smasher and the Teacher. The Smasher's original concept was to be able to break world assets, including trees and buildings, but he was removed because the devs felt that it'd be extremely difficult to balance a killer that can wipe out an entire map. He never made it past the prototyping phase. The Teacher, on the other hand, looks to have almost been the focus of the game's first DLC chapter, developed even to the point of having items and perks icons. Added in July of 2016, the following files are present. Trapple, which would have been a survivor item, Detention, a killer power, and Underperform, a killer perk. The first DLC chapter ended up being The Nurse, and the teacher's files remain in the game today, totally unused. Could these sounds have belonged to the teacher? Why was the killer developed up to a point where they'd even added in assets, only to drop the concept entirely? Uh, it was probably the devs throwing in a red herring to throw everyone off what they're actually working on. They do that a lot. It's kind of a big part of the way they engage with the community. But wouldn't it be spooky if instead I said something like, perhaps they started playtesting and then found that the character concept was haunted. Perhaps late in the night, they could hear the sounds of their creation becoming reality, moving closer and closer. That's not what happened, sorry, but it'd be funny if it was. Could we just pretend that it is what happened? Add some sustenance to this video, please. Here are some other things that are in the game files that aren't used. There are six perks. The aforementioned Underperform, Artifact Hunter, In the Dark, Last Standing, Overconfidence, and Tough Runner. In the Dark was a killer perk that would set your terror radius depending on the number of survivors left alive in the trial. I imagine this was scrapped as they decided to give different killers different terror radii, radi radiuses, radii, and this would have messed with that. Last Standing increased your action speed depending on how many survivors were left in the trial. This later became Bill's perk left behind. Tough Runner was a survivor perk and sounds like it could have been another name for Dead Hard. We have no real information about it or any of the other unused perks, so that's that. There are different map variants that go unused. Macmillan Estate has one called Mini and one called Seb's Dream. Protus Pren has the Infinite Gym. I know the word infinite strikes fear into the hearts of killer mains. I'm sorry, I should have put in a trigger warning. Please forgive me. And Blackwater Swamp has both Dead Lake and Grim Gully. There is also the Skills status effect icon. We have no information on what that might have been used for. Now, there are some other parts of the game that were once in but eventually got removed, such as the Moon Bouquet offerings, which allowed you to control the brightness of the map. These are removed due to balance reasons. Imagine if you could still make the map 70% darker. That would be, uh, not fun. There's also the Muddy Splinter and Shock Splinter, which allowed you to play as the Hag and the Doctor respectively. The idea being that if you didn't own these DLCs, then you had a chance of finding the character in the Blood Web and giving them a try. I like that. That's a cool idea. Next up, we have some pretty wacky early character names. The Trapper was originally called Chuckles. Wraith was originally called Banshee Bob. Billy was just known as Crooked. The shape was Boogeyman Stalker, which I guess fits in with the Halloween film series. <laughs> The hag was known as the witch. Doctor as Mu Yi. Huntress as Anna Bear. Cannibal was Leatherface. Nightmare was Sandman. And the clown was known as both the ringmaster and the medicine man. Finally, it might interest you to know that pallets were originally known as bookshelves and hex totems were originally known as hex bags. No idea what that would have looked like. The placement of random pallets around the world is odd, but I think that bookshelves would have been even stranger. I'd like to end with this video of an early prototype of the game. Before scratch marks, it turns out, the killer was able to just see survivors exact location through walls via these visual footstep effects. Now, what are those two footprints that are on him? Did someone kick him really hard on the ass? So this was the first uh, definition of uh, being able to see where the survivors ran. At the time it was a 100% accurate location of where they were and the game ran much faster as a result. The survivors were faster, the killer was faster and he got 100% location of where you were. So if you're running on the other side of a wall he knew exactly where we were. If they'd have gone with that a phenomenal amount of the game's strategy and tactics would have just been non-existent so thank goodness that they removed it. Scratch marks make sense and are much better than this so that's a good one. So that's the end of the video. That covers everything that is currently unused in the game that we are aware of. If there's anything I missed please let me know. Uh, I tried 
tried to look into actually being able to load the map variants, but I couldn't find any way of doing it. A huge amount of the work here was done by people that submitted to the cutting room floor. Don't want to take credit for that. It has stuff on there that even the DBD wiki doesn't have. So shout out to the cutting room floor. Link in the description to check it out for yourself. As I mentioned on my community tab, I'm going to stop promising a time frame for the killer's tier list video. It'll come out when it's done. I don't know how long it's going to take, but today's Q&A question comes from Hassan101 who asks, how do you come up with video ideas? Uh, that's a really interesting question, actually. I just kind of think of topics that might be interesting to me. People often recommend a lot of stuff and every single time someone recommends something, I say, oh, I'll add that to the list and it gets added to a Google Keep list. If I can't think of anything that would be particularly interesting just off the top of my head, I take a look at that list. So I try and think of either topics that haven't been covered at all or topics that have been covered but that I think could be improved on slightly. As well as the names on screen right now, I would like to thank Jen Rush's Club and Minions of the Entity members, Lewis Hernan, Rissin, Merciless Cheeseburger, Just a Pigeon, Santi Gamer, Valiant Praetorian, and Alia E. Oh, no, and also Joshua Daney. Whoa, almost missed Joshua Daney. Sorry, Joshua, there you go. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Yeah, that's fine. Fair enough. As a DBD streamer with a guitar, you have no excuse to not cosplay Kate Denson. Holy crap, that's a sick idea. I will cosplay Kate Denson. Mark my words! When I hit 1,000 followers on Twitch, as long as you remind me, thank you, Flame, which means the onus is on you to remind me, I will cosplay as Kate Denson for a stream. Oh, oh, this Dwight is getting it, mate. This Dwight is getting it.